Today our learning objective will be students will be able to summarize numeric data with numerical summaries including the mean, median, range, IQR, and use these summaries to describe the center, spread, and shape of the distribution. Let's get started on the question. The dot plot shows the number of chess games won by each of the 20 students in a competition. Which statement about the data is true? Okay, the first thing we'll do is our annotations. And the first thing I would want to do is circle important words. I mean, circle important numbers. I would circle the number 20. Next, I would want to underline the question. Which statement about the data is true? Now, the next thing I would want to do is box in key important words. I have already boxed in dot plot. The next word I would want to box in would be students to let me know that 20 is representing the amount of students who are who won or who competed in the in the chess game. And I know now that I would have 20 values in my data set. Last thing I need to do is is to box in the word true because I know I'm looking for a true statement. So I have to find out which one of these statements are true. And what hooks me on to the question is, is that I'm actually thinking that I got 20 different people playing the game of chess. First thing they do is tell us to order the numbers. Second, we'll find the median. And we know that the median is the midpoint or the middle. And last, we will find the IQR. And we know that that is just the difference between the high, the high and the low interquartile uh, ranges. Okay, now we're dealing with a dot plot. And many of us have never seen one, so let's get some information about the, the dot plot. Each of the dots or the X's represents one. They show how many of each. And a line plot, it shows data on a number line with an X to show how many times the number comes up. All of the lines have, uh, all line plots have a label to tell you what the, uh, the data is being counted as. Okay, now let's put the numbers in order. We have three zeros. We have two ones on our number line. We have three threes. We have four, four, I mean, excuse me, we have three fours, two sixes, three sevens, two eights, one nine, and one ten. Now, let's put these numbers, let's find out which number is the least or our minimum. Well, first, I need before I can even do that I need to put the numbers in order chronolo chronologically so let's number our, our data set three four five ten we should end up with at least with exactly 20 numbers in our data set Okay, now let's label our least value or our minimum value. Our minimum value will be zero. And let's label our greatest or our maximum value, which would be the number 10. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead, since we did the uh, ordering from least to greatest, I want to find out what my median is. My median is my midpoint. So let's circle our midpoint or the two data values in the data set that we believe our midpoint will be found. I believe that my median is found between the number that I counted in chronological order, which is 10 and 11, and both of those values are the number four. Now let's label our median. 
All right, now I want to find my lower quartile range. So I have numbers 1 to 10 from my median to my least number. And when I look, I see that 5 and 6 would be my midpoint. Whatever is in whatever the two numbers add up to be and divide by 2 will end up giving me my midpoint. The data that I have inside will be the number 1 and 3. This is my lower or my first quartile range. I want to go ahead and label it. And I wanted to go ahead and find out what the actual uh, lower uh, quartile range will be. And that would be 1 plus 3 divided by 2 would give me 2. Now I want to find my upper quartile range. So I would look from my median to my greatest or my maximum number. And I see I had a number from 11 to 20. And when I look at the uh, data set, I see that when I count chronologically, I have 15 and 16, which are my midpoints. And both of those data sets have a value of 7. So let's go ahead and circle where we believe our upper or our third quartile will be found. And let's go ahead and label it. Now we have 7 and 7. And if we were to add those up and divide by 2, we would end up with 7 and 7. The same process that we use with our median. Now, let's go ahead and box in our, um, our quartile or make a box plot. But before we make a box plot, before we make a box plot, we need to find out what our inner quartile range is. And I think I jumped ahead of myself a little bit. So now our, the way that we find that is we divide our upper quartile by our lower quartile. That would give us 7 minus 2, which equals 5. So our inner quartile range would equal 5. Now, if we box this in, we'll see that our lower range starts at the number 2. And it ends at our median of 4. And when we box in our upper quartile, we see that it goes from 4 to 7. So the range is from 2 to, to 7. That gives us an inner quartile range of 5. Lastly, let's go ahead and put our whiskers on our box. And all we'll basically be doing is going from the middle to the lower quartile. Now that we're at the lower quartile, let's start from the lower quartile to our least value. So this will be our low. And we have our, our whiskers. It goes from the lower quartile to the least or the minimum value. Now let's do the same thing for our upper. We're going to go from the third or the upper quartile to the greatest value. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll do it again tomorrow. Thank you.